Yo, welcome to my channel. My name's JD and I'm an artist from Bristol in the UK. And as you probably guessed from the title, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a tattoo stencil. Now by all means this is just how I make my stencils. Other people might do it a different way and I'm not saying this is how you should do a stencil, but this is my way as requested by some of you guys. It's more of an in-depth tutorial with some tricks and tips on how I do things. So without further ado, let's crack on. These are all the things that you'll need to make your stencil. First thing you'll need is a design. Preferably something good. I've gone for a traditional gypsy girl. I've gone with this because it's got really thick big bold outlines so it should be real clear for the video and you should be able to see everything that's going on quite clearly. So that's the first thing you'll need. Next up we have the paper. This is the transfer paper. I go for the Spirit Classic Thermal. Um, you can draw on top of it and well let me show you. So each sheet consists of a few layers. You have your top sheet, which is what you'll draw on and what the carbon will transfer onto. You have your protective layer, which just protects this sheet from the carbon while you're doing your tracing or your design. And then you have the carbon layer, obviously. This is carbon filled on one side, not on the back. And then you've just got your back sheet. I go with Spirit because I found it has really dark, nice, bold carbon and it just gives a really good dark line for your stencil and it seems to stay on the skin quite well as well. Next thing you'll need is your fake skin or whatever you're going to be practicing on, whether it be a honeydew melon or an orange, people tend to practice on different things. Um, I did used to do it on pig skin, but to be honest with you, it was just the smell and it's just the keeping it in the freezer, it just takes up space because I like keeping a lot of food in the freezer and yeah, now to be honest, it did work well, but it's just a bit of a pain to get hold of and this practice skin is just really quite good. Um, so yeah, that's why I go for that. You can find these on Amazon. Um, you can find them any sort of tattoo supply retailer. Um, all I would say is just go for the more thicker, sort of 3mm thick, nice soft silicone. Try and stay away from the extremely thin stuff. I find that the needle just doesn't go in it very well. Whereas this, by all means, this is nothing like real skin. And real skin is almost like melted butter compared to this but these are great to practice on. In fact, I'm actually growing my own watermelons out in the garden. So I'm planning on using those to tattoo on as well. They're honeydew watermelons, which apparently are one of the best to tattoo on because you go too deep and the juices come out. And if you don't go deep enough, the ink doesn't stay in the skin. So it sort of resembles human skin a bit. And that's just what I've heard anyway. By all means, I've never tattooed a watermelon and I'm not a pro, so practice skin. Next thing, you'll need all the tools to put the transfer onto the practice skin. So you will need a stencil gel. These vary, some are really good, some are not so good. So it's probably worth spending a little bit of money. I mean, you don't need much. I think this one costed around about 15 pounds. That's great British pounds. So, a little bit, but it does go a long way. Even though this skin just came straight out of the wrapping, I do like to clean the skin just to get rid of any surface dust and stuff like that before I tattoo. So I personally like to use just an Andrex wipe and then just dry it off with a little bit of tissue. I almost forgot, you will need something to draw on the transfer paper with. So what I recommend is just a pencil, it can be a HB, anything like that. 
um, trying to stay away from the darker sort of shades of pencils, the Bs, because you kind of don't need the lines too dark, you just need it as a bit of a guide because as you will see you need to go back over those lines again anyway. So I use a HB pencil and there's no shame even though I am tracing sometimes you'll do a line that you're not a hundred percent happy with as it's just the stencil it's better to make it perfect so rub that line out and do it again so you'll need a rubber now after that to get the carbon onto the paper a great thing to use is a ballpoint pen or a biro pen preferably a pen with a ball that can roll along quite smoothly because you don't want to rip the paper but all this will be explained as the video goes on so you've got your design your transfer paper your fake skin your wipes your kitchen roll your pen your pencil and your rubber and once you have all of these you have everything you need to make a great stencil so first thing if you hear any dogs or cats fighting I do have my vendry window open so you may hear some of that but anyway the first step will be making the transfer these are the things that you'll need might not need that but we will see so what you want to do is trace the design keeping the protective layer on I'll probably do is tuck that in under there I'll then use it as sort of tracing paper I don't want this paper to move about too much so what I tend to do is I just squeeze it right up to the edge of the top and to the side if possible you're not always using a book but if you're using a sheet of A4 paper just push it up to the top just don't want this to slide about too much and as you can see now I've put it up the top it moves a lot less and then you take your pencil and you just map out the lines you don't need to push hard because it's just a guide to start with but try and copy the lines as perfect as possible you can either sketch them in or you can try and sort of imagine it as a tattoo and try and sort of do the lines as one pass lines or you can just sort of shade it in and then do a more profound line afterwards it's entirely up to you I almost like to imagine this as a practice for the tattoo so I try to do everything true to the tattooing if that makes sense so say I was doing this line here I would like to try and keep the need like imagine this was the needle try and keep it in the sort of position that I would do the line move my hand up as if I was using a tattoo gun and yeah just sort of get the feel for it I mean this bit is very dark on my stencil because it was a fully coloured stencil ideally you would do the outline and not colour it in and do the stencil from that and then colour it after or do two different versions so for instance here is quite hard to see but I know the design so also one other tip is what I try to do is keep the design the same way around at all times and the reason for this is try and treat it like your human canvas or I mean I'm doing fake skin but imagine you're tattooing a person and you can't just keep moving them around spinning them around and stuff like that so 
you need to learn how to pull your lines in every direction possible and the more you do this the easier you will find your tattooing and I mean if you spend too long sort of moving yourself or moving the person you're tattooing around it's going to take you twice as long to do the tattoo so I like to try and imagine every time that I do the design do the drawing even when I'm doing it on the paper that I'm doing it to an actual person and I'm pulling the lines with a tattoo gun but I'm technically not with the necklace like this it is pretty vital to try and get every circle exactly the same size just because if if one's a little bit out it just sort of stand out like a sore thumb and if they're all out it's just not as aesthetically pleasing so really take your time and practice circles if you can maybe even just five minutes a day take a sheet of paper and just practice circles practice getting them as round as you can practice getting them the same size if possible so like do a few in a line I've been drawing since I was a kid and my favourite thing to do was to copy pictures like Sonic or my favourite sort of animated drawings and I used to just copy them as best I could the more identical it was the more happy I was with the drawing and for me putting lines in very specific places was quite a big thing for me if you had like a portrait for instance you want it to be exact one little line in the wrong direction can literally just totally change a piece as a new tattooer only actually tattooed three people one of them being myself I'm just going to stick to the simple designs and try and stick to the fundamentals of tattooing trying to perfect my line work and try and build those skills and you don't have to just do that with a tattoo gun I cannot stress enough how important it is if you want to get into tattooing honestly the most important thing is drawing and practicing hours upon hours years upon years just perfect your drawing skills if you can not understand about shading and why light goes there and shadows go here you're not really going to make it and I like to think that because of my years of art experience as a kid growing up and later on in life as well keeping up with the drawing and it definitely pays off so now that I've got all the lines down next thing I'm going to do is map out where the shading goes and to do this I'm going to use a dotted line so I know this actually goes to grey as you can see it's not completely black what I'm going to do is just dot out where I feel the black should stop uh -huh. I mean this is one technique you don't have to do this like I'll show you in a second but you can just sort of shade it just so you know what bits you're going to do black and 
And there we go. Might want to just define some more lines before you ink it, just to help you out see them. Um, am I happy with the lips? Yeah, they're alright. Another good thing to do is to keep your reference in front of you. It's always good to keep the reference there as close as possible. Wait, you can move it this side. But the reference is always your best friend. So the next step is I take out the protective layer. Now then, I'm very close to not hitting the carbon there. So you do have to be a bit careful how far up to the edge you go. Maybe I should have spun it round so this was at the top, but. So the next step is to take your biro or your ballpoint pen and you would just apply some pressure. Take your time with these lines because this is what you're going to be following when you tattoo. And I'm just putting a bit of pressure onto it. Not a silly amount so that I rip the paper but enough to push a good solid carbon line onto it. And for this, as is my guide, you'll see me moving the paper around a little bit more. And I could just treat it as another practice to the tattooing, but as this is my guide, I do want it to be as perfect as possible. So I do feel that moving the page around to do a line in a certain direction that you're more comfortable in is a good idea. Also trying to treat it like a tattoo as well, like if I can do it in one pass, I will. Just as it will make that line a bit neater than if I was to stop and start again, which is something you don't really want to do in tattooing. See that line went a little bit wobbly, I'm just going to straighten it out a little bit. Don't be afraid to do that because, to be honest, with a traditional tattoo like this, hopefully my needle is going to be a little bit thicker than this. So it probably will be about this thickness. But as a guide, as long as you don't make your lines too much thinner than the needle, you should be okay. But the rule of thumb really is try and keep the size of the needle, the size of the pen is, is almost works hand in hand to like a five round liner really. So yeah and you just push these lines in it might be worth just giving it one quick look just to make sure that the lines are going on yep all oh, good as you can see there was a little bit less pressure here so I mean it's up to you you can go back and make it a bit darker but it was enough for me to see Anyway, I'm going to waz this bit on again so I don't bore you and then it'll be on to the next bit. So, as you can see I messed up there. Kind of just scribbled out the line that I don't want. So I should be able to tell that on the stencil. But going back to the shading, as you can see I've added the dots. What I'll probably do is just very lightly, lightly draw in and just go over those bits. Some sort of lines, like a little cross hatch or just almost like you're shading and draw in really. And just sort of go in them like this. Just so that you can't go wrong. When you put your stencil on, you can't go wrong where that black goes. And you don't need to colour it all in black. As it's only really a guide. And there you have it. 
Now, be very wary, whenever you touch this carbon paper, your hands will turn blue. And you'll look like a smurf. So, just using the back sheet, just try not to touch the carbon. And there you have your stencil. Now you can use scissors, or you can just be lazy like me. Terrible example. Let's do it properly. So either take a pair of scissors or a scalpel like me and just sort of get quite close to the design. You don't want too much excess paper and cut your transfer out so you pretty much have that. Take my wipe. Wipe it down a bit. No, you don't need to dry it off. I mean, I'm putting a transfer on, but just to make sure I catch every bit of dust. And then this is where your gel comes in. Now, you don't need much. You need to saturate it just right. I mean, that's probably too much. And obviously, if this was a real tattoo, you would definitely use gloves. Hygiene top priority at all times so let's just spread this around make sure you get a nice even layer all over not too thick because you don't want the carbon to leak and bleed out everywhere and the thing with this practice skin is it doesn't absorb the transfer goo as much as human skin would so really, ideally, you just want a very thin layer, but consistent enough to pull the ink from the transfer. So I think that'll do. Take your transfer. I think I'll do it this way around. And place it gently on the skin. making sure every bit sort of touch him. You can tell because the carbon goes a bit of a darker blue. As the carbon absorbs through the paper. So that should be all right. Let's have a look. You pull it off as gently as possible, try not to slide it. And yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. It's not too good. And that's the thing with these fake skins, because it's plastic, it doesn't quite absorb it as much as human skin would. So as you can see, it's a lot crisper on the human skin. But it's a good enough guide to follow, and it's more of a how to make a stencil tutorial. So... If you wouldn't put it on the practice skin, it would be good. As you can see, it sets really quickly. I mean, the longer you leave it, the more it will set. And I don't want this on my arm for ages because it does stay on there for quite some time. Anyway, that is pretty much how I make a transfer. It might not be the right way it might not be the best way the best way would probably just be have a printer and click a button but we can't all have that i am going to do the tattoo so i'll put that in a time lapse for the rest of the video and if you want to watch it please stay and enjoy if you learned a lot from this video and if it was beneficial to you if you enjoyed it please share it around give it that thumbs up give it a like and if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be sick. Keep the little bell notification icon ticked. And you can be the first one to know when the next video drops. So yeah, hopefully this was good for you. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, just let me know. And please, just enjoy the rest of the video. Respect.